What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training HQ. Today's video is going to be on a topic that I know many of you have been waiting on, and I've said that I was going to make a video on it a while ago, so I'm finally getting to it now. And that is why I don't personally bulk and cut in the traditional manner, and why I generally don't believe that it's necessary. First off, I want to say this is just my personal opinion, and there's really no definitive answer on this, and I also want to say that my opinion isn't necessarily unique either. See, what I do and what I generally suggest doing is instead of doing the traditional bulking and cutting is to have a lean bulk and then recomping. For those of you who don't already know, bulking is when you're gaining weight on a caloric surplus, cutting is when you're losing weight on a caloric deficit, and recomping is when you're staying the same body weight eating maintenance calories. So before I get into why I believe in bulking and recomping, Let's first get into why people do the traditional bulking and cutting and why did that get popular? See, the source is competitive bodybuilding. What the bodybuilders try to do is they try to put on as much muscle as possible, eat more calories in the off season, and then come competition, try to lose as much fat and as much weight as possible so they can get shredded and lean. And the thing is, they get so lean that it's unhealthy, that it's unsustainable to be at that body fat percentage year round. And this is where the confusion begins in my opinion, because average people are trying to emulate what these top level bodybuilders are doing. But these top level bodybuilders are starting from a completely different point and ending at a different point. For example, a top level natural bodybuilder might walk around at around 13% body fat in the off season. And then when he cuts for a show, he might cut down to 4 to 6% body fat. Whereas when you look at the average person, they want to emulate this. So I see them, they bulk up all the way to like 20% or 18% and then they cut down to 13%. So by the end of the cut, they're just at a healthy range. Now it's important to understand that these numbers I'm giving are completely arbitrary in this made up scenario. But the point is the principle still applies. The fact that these pro bodybuilders are getting extremely lean and they are not starting out that overweight to begin with. They're starting out in shape, but they're just getting to a level where their body fat percentage becomes unhealthy and unsustainable. Whereas the average everyday person goes from just being completely out of shape, then gets in shape and then starts bulking again. So in my opinion, what you should do is maintain a healthy body fat percentage year round and just gradually work towards your goal. I can't give you an exact body fat percentage range which you'll be comfortable at because everyone has a different set point. That comes to genetics and the more you lift, the more comfortable you are at a lower body fat percentage. And from there, I suggest that you just go through periods of lean bulking and then recomping, staying within that range the entire time. So I'll give an example. Let's say you're a beginner lifter, you're 5'9 and you're 160 pounds, and let's say you're at 18 to 20% body fat. But your goal is to be 5'9, 175 pounds at say 10% body fat. So for this person, I recommend that he stays at the same weight and that he recomps until he gets to around 13% body fat. And then from there, lean bulks to around 170 pounds at 15% body fat. And then from there, he can cut down and get back to 13%, maybe 12, 10% at that weight and then start bulking again. So at no point are you actually losing body weight. One of the main reasons why I recommend this is that this allows for constant progression. That's why you see I'm always getting stronger, I'm always improving my lifts because I'm never going through periods where I'm drastically cutting my calories and just losing body weight and losing lean body mass. I'm actually always slightly improving my lean body mass and it's not just gonna be due to neural efficiency by the way with my improvements of my lifts. It is lean body mass that's improved if you're greatly achieving progressive overload over time. And also I wanna say that if you're doing the extreme bulking and cutting, there's only a certain amount of lean body mass that you can gain. There's only a certain amount you can improve on your lifts. So there gets to a point where there's diminishing returns. Another negative of the drastic bulking and cutting that I've noticed is that people don't necessarily know how well their programming is working. Because if you're drastically bulking, anything is going to work to an extent but you don't know how well that's working, if that's working well enough for once you cut, for it to actually pay off, for progress to actually be made. All right, I also wanna address the long-standing myth that you can't build muscle and lose fat at the same time. I still see this perpetuated today, and I understand where people are coming from. People are saying that you can't drastically build muscle and lose fat, and a lot of gimmicks do try to sell you on this point, so it's important that we understand that. However, to say that it's impossible is just scientifically not true. We have studies that show that you can gain lean body mass, at least newer lifters have gained significant amounts of lean body mass while losing body weight. Now you may say, well that's the catch, it's only for newer lifters. When it comes to experienced lifters, it's going to take so long it wouldn't even be worth pursuing. However, that's where I say anytime you're trying to build muscle as a natural lifter that's been doing this for over five years, 
it's going to be slow progress regardless. And you can even see this on YouTube. If you look at some of the natural bodybuilding progression videos, you see that people go through long periods of bulking and then extended periods of cutting. And if they are actually natural and have been lifting for a long time, you'll see extremely minimal progress. Unfortunately, that is a fact of life you just have to accept if you are a natural lifter. It's going to take an incredibly long period of time to build a noticeable amount of lean body mass. But my point is that if you maintain a certain body weight and drastically improve your lifts, you will be losing fat and you will be building muscle. It'll just be to a small degree. Now you may say, okay, that's possible technically, but it's still not optimal in compared to bulking and cutting. And to that, I say you might be right. This is just my opinion. There really is no definitive answer to this, as I said at the start of the video. Of course, I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm a power lifter, but I have seen some very consistent progress in terms of lean body mass. I'm 5'7", about 181, and I don't know my exact body fat percentage, but I'd say I'm fairly lean, and I've just seen some very good progress, and I've been very satisfied with it as far as body composition. So I just want to reiterate that this is just my opinion. This is how I do things, and I've seen other people succeed doing this as well. But just the most important thing to keep in mind is that no matter what route you go as a natural lifter, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take a lot of consistency, smart programming, and progressive overload. No matter what diet strategy you do, you will never be able to bypass those basic principles that apply to everyone. Alright guys, that's it. I hope this video was helpful. Make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching guys. Peace! And on the lower level, word of the devil, I can feel the trouble inside. Telling me what to do, I never abide. Feel the vibe. The second we ride, you know we know just how to do